Hey guys, welcome to my channel. This is Russell Alfetch and for this video I'm gonna walk you through how you can quickly build a functional web app using UI Path apps. So let's get right onto it. Okay, so what we're gonna build is a very simple app that can list out all the assets by interacting into a database, in this case a data service, and then be able to assign that specific asset to a specific person, um, much like how you do onboarding. Now let's build that app. So let's start by building a new app. Let's call this my first app and click create. And this is one of the new and coolest features in, in new iPath app. So now they've added this beautiful templates and with the introduction of templates it makes it even more easier, pressure for a person like me to get started building beautiful UIs. So now let's select this particular UI for our app. The first thing that we're gonna build is this section that should contain the list of assets. So it can source data from any existing databases that you have or better if you can also leverage data service in order to make your app more performant which is what we're going to do in this case for that i have prepared this asset inventory entity in data service that we'll be using for our application which contains a different details like asset name brand model which is assigned to asset cost, all of these details that we'll be showing in our app. Again, first thing we need to do is bind this particular custom list into our asset inventory by filling up the data source field and adding the entities in our app. So let's select that asset inventory and it automatically associates dependent entities as well. So I click add. So now that's done, let's go back to the custom list and point that to our asset inventory entity in the data service. A custom list is a display control that lets you customize which details to show. So what I want to show are the asset name, asset inventory here, I have the asset name for this header and what is the asset type and lastly would be the cost of the asset which are present in our data service and then we'll name this section as asset list so we're done setting up with our asset list section which contains all of the assets so now we'll go to the detailed section for the currently selected asset in the custom list it will show all the additional details here for that particular asset so let's set up this container so that it will point to the currently selected item we do that using the data context we're gonna look up for asset inventory details which contains this is the filter that we're gonna build which contains the asset ID that's uh, currently selected how we do that is the currently selected asset in our custom list so now we have the data context for this container and we can access all the details from this data context. First thing, let's show the currently selected asset tag and for this additional details which most importantly which person this asset is assigned to, which business unit and finally let's say what's the brand or model of this asset and then we'll tie up the assigned to the business unit and the brand model so now we've added static labels and dynamic labels for the actual values and then let's just finish up these different sections which are also in our data context as separate fields which relates to each specific asset so these are, let's say, contains the specifications of the asset, 
the features and all of those details are here so we'll just need to map this and finally the last section here let's finish up the description okay now that we have that asset list section and detailed section of a currently selected asset, let's now add a function to our button to assign this asset to another person. For us to do that, we need to create a rule for this button to open a page that lets us select the person to assign that asset to. Let's select open a page and we can create a new page a blank page would suffice so i select that and drag that over here and this will just show us a pop-up so what this button will do is open this assignment page which we will do right now just very simple drop down to choose which user and a button to assign this asset to that chosen user the drop down will just need to point it to our users entity in this case system users or any other entities that you have that contains a list of users and then the column will be the name of the user so that it will show the name in this drop down list to finish this off so we will create a rule that once a sign is clicked, we will update the database or in this case, the data service record. So similar to how we built the data context, we will be doing a lookup from the asset inventory where, so filter right here, where the ID of the asset is matching the currently selected asset however in this case you cannot use directly from the controls so what you will need to do here is create a variable to assign the currently selected asset so i named it custom list selected id so that i can assign the asset id here once the selection is changed from the custom list so let's go back to this later let's just finish this up so what I will change here is the assign to which I will bind to the drop down list selected object binding and this finishes up our create and update entity record uh, once the button is clicked it will update the data service record that's selected so how do we make sure that we update the correct entity record we'll go back to our custom list make sure that when the value change we will set the variable so when the value of the selected item in the list change this will be assigned to the variable so here we can select the custom list selected value id that's it what else we need to do here let's just name this properly and i think we're done let's add the image here so the binding to the image let's add a new control so we want to show all swell the image of the asset and let's make it centered let's make sure that the size of the image is corresponding to the size of the container and let's make the height of the container um, automatic and the width is just 150 so let's do the same for the image let's make the size as 150 pixels for the width and automatically scale the height Similarly, we can add the image in this container here and then the size will be corresponding to 50 by 50. You can design this however you want and of course we need to make sure it has the correct image associated to that asset. So it's also in the data service point to the image URL and as well as this one point to the image url from the data context image url okay so let's see how it looks like okay i think it looks good and let's try the function assign it let's say to ap 
you click assign which is good and you can build this up much further so you can inter integrate this with your service now or workday application to complete your onboarding process automation so what you can do is when the button is clicked you can call on a robot by starting process and specify the process that will perform the integrations to your service now or workday or any hr applications that you have stay tuned for more tutorials in uipath thank you